Hey, what's up guys? Neat J here. Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you around of a Redshift tune material. I'm going to experiment with both NPR and PBR lighting. First, I'm going to show you how to create these custom textures. These colorful textures were inspired by my cat's fur colors. I have seven cats, each with unique fur colors. I painted these watercolor textures in Procreate, referencing the UV texture and 3D painting marks. Let's get started. Now let's go to the UV edit layout to edit the UV of the model. To avoid cutting patterns where I'll be painting, I'll carefully cut the UVs. In lines mode, press U plus M to use the path selection tool. Select the path for UV unwrapping. Hold Shift to select multiple lines. Click on UV Unwrap. Then, switch to the Paint Layout. Click the Body Paint Setup Wizard icon. Select the object to be painted. Click Next. On the UV Setup page, uncheck the Recalculate UV box. Go on Next. Set the texture size and click Finish. Now, we can paint directly on the model. I'll pick a yellowish color. In the brush attribute, adjust the brush size and paint the cat's pattern. You can use the 3D painting texture directly here. Since I'm using this as a reference, I'll paint casually. Back in the UV edit layout, you can see the paintings on the UV. In the file tab, click save texture. Choose a format and save it. Use the UV texture as a reference and paint in Photoshop or other software. Now let's go back to Cinema 4D. Create a redshift tune material and drag it onto the model. We haven't created any lights, but the tune effect is visible through the camera angle. As the tune material is a non-photorealistic rendering shader, it's best paired with specific lights. Redshift's documentation recommends point, spot, or infinite lights for the best match with the tune shader. These lights provide direct control over the tone map ramp, ensuring sharp cell shaded effects. Let's start with an infinite light. Rotate it to get the angle you like. The lighting is very dark. We can adjust the exposure of the infinite light. Now, let's configure the tune material. Get into the node editor. The base tone map node controls stylized shading. The tone map's ramp defines how light transitions across the surface. This is key to create the cell shaded look. For simplicity, I'll use two colors in the ramp. The reflection is also controlled by a tone map. We can adjust the ramp color for the reflection tone map. Set a base color. If you want reflections, tweak parameters like the roughness. This parameter combines roughness and highlight spread. 
You can also adjust the IOR value. I'll leave reflections off. Now let's move to the rim settings. It's off by default. Let's crank this up and adjust the width. We can see this rim light effect now. We can also control this rim tone map. Duplicate the reflection tone map node and plug it into the rim tabs tone map port. I'll set the ramp to black and white. This creates a sharp white rim. We can change the rim color. I'll change the base tone map ramp color. Set the ramp interpolation to smooth for a softer look. Now let's add a tone map pattern node to the tone map. The default pattern is half tone. We can adjust the pattern's color, scale, or rotation. Let's try to plug the base tone map to the pattern's intensity override and change the pattern color. Now I want to add some noise to the pattern. Disconnect the pattern for now and search for maximum noise. Plug the noise node to the base tone map's exposure. We can see noise along the tone map ramp. Adjust the overall scale and connect the pattern back to the tone map port. The pattern edges now appear more random. Tweak the noise parameters to get what you want. Now let's move to the outline settings. Outlines are controlled by the contour node. We can adjust the external and internal thickness. I'll temporarily change the internal color to identify internal lines clearly. Increase the thickness and adjust the angle threshold to make it obvious. That's it. Let's get the black color back and fine tune the thickness. The outlines are too uniform. We can add noise to them. Search for maximum noise again and plug it into the thickness modifiers for both external and internal parts. Tweak these parameters to explore different effects. To add more details, I'll duplicate the noise. Change the noise type and scale, then tweak it. Add a color layer node to combine these two noise nodes. Set one noise as the base layer and the other as layer 1. Change layer 1's blend mode to multiply.
Duplicate the tune material for the eyes. Disconnect the tone map pattern and set the base color to blackish. Increase the reflection weight to one. Now we can see the highlights reflected in the eyes. Increase the IOR to five for stronger reflections. For better control, I'll use point lights for eye reflections. Create a point light and increase the exposure to eight. In the infinite light, exclude the eyes. Increase the intensity to 1000. In the point lights project settings, set the mode to include and add the eyes. Adjust the point lights position. Duplicate the point light for an additional reflected highlight. Set the reflection tone map to a black and white ramp. Increase the rim width. Maybe change the rim tone map ramp to smooth. and change the color. Now let's move to bump map. Let's add a noise to the bump map. Tweak the noise scale and bump height scale. Duplicate the material again for the nose. Reduce the contour thickness. Change the rim color. Lower the reflection width. Play around with these settings to achieve different looks. Now let's explore the material with PBR lighting. Turn off the infinite and point lights. Create a dome light. Add an HDRI texture and adjust it.
The reflection of the eye material is too high with this light. Lower the IOR to 1.5. Adjust the rim color and width. I want to use the watercolor painting texture, which I showed in the beginning of this video, as the base color. Let's move the material to the body object. Connect the texture to the base color. Add a color correction to it and adjust it. Increase the reflection weight to explore the look. It looks a bit pearlescent. Let's tweak the IOR and roughness for better results. Tweak the rim settings. Adjust the thickness. Duplicate the material for the tail. Load the texture of the tail as the base color. Adjust it. The rim light seems too small here. Increase the rim width. Add an area light to brighten the model. Let's fine tune the contour settings. Duplicate the noise node and plug it into both external and internal opacity. Set the overall scale to 1. Increase the external thickness to make it clear to see. I'll change the background to a solid color. Yeah, we can see the outline clearer now. It's discontinuous, more of a hand-drawn sketch feel. Try changing the noise type and scale. These parameters are here to experiment with. That's it for today's tutorial. If you found this helpful, feel free to like, comment or subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.